What's up guys, it's LH of Low Tech, and I wanted to do a quick video about the settings I'm using on my Monoprice Select Mini V2. Uh, so I just did the unboxing video uh, a few days ago and had a couple days to kind of play around with the printer, make sure everything's printing correctly. And since I haven't had any, really, any issues printing with it, uh, I thought I'd share what settings I'm using. So hopefully you can use this as a starting point when you have to set up your own printer as well as um, some options you can change kind of maintain some print quality, um, at least the ones that have worked for me. So use this as a starting guide, uh, especially when you change materials, you might have to change the temperatures up and down a little bit. Um, but this works for me on, on a number of different PLAs that I've tested. This is the standard quality setting that I have set up. The biggest difference between all the settings is gonna be the layer height, but through that I've also changed a couple other things. But you can see here, that the layer height is 0.175 millimeters. This is one of the ideal heights for this particular printer, so we'll go ahead and use this one as a good starting point. It does print fairly quickly at uh, at this particular layer, layer height, and the quality ends up being pretty good. So for most cases, this is probably what you're gonna wanna stick around with. Going through, making sure that the initial layer heights are about here. The 0.4 millimeters is whatever size nozzle you end up having on your printer, so that's fine. The initial layer height is 0.3, and that's just going to be, you know, how closely you can calibrate your, your printer and 0.3 seems to work pretty well in my case. I do use a point or a, a 1.2 millimeter wall thickness. So there's three layers of wall on the standard quality at least. This I found is a good compromise of strength as well as making sure the outer layer looks really nice. So going through with that, as well as a top and bottom thickness of 0.875. Um, I wanted to use a multiple of the layer height and this puts out five different layers for the top and bottom. So it uh, gives a nice strong structure as well as making sure that every kind of nook and cranny is filled with PLA. I did add some other options. Uh, I activated here like the outer four inner walls. By default, I don't have this checked, but there are some cases where if I had to use it before, so I have an option showing here. If you ever need to, if you ever see a setting here that is missing, you can always go into the preferences and add that in yourself. Going down the list, 20% infill density, that's kind of standard. The infill before walls steps here. Uh, in most cases, this is fine, infill before walls. However, if you are seeing the infill peeking out a little bit from the from your prints, or you can kind of see like the indentations of where they should be or things like that, it might be something you can try turning it off. If the print is going to succeed without infill, so if it's a model that doesn't need infill at all, um, it works really well to do infill or to do the walls before the infill. If you can't use it without you know, having infill, probably should leave the infill before walls enabled just because it does make the, the print a little more reliable, especially for things like overhangs. In this particular model of a Lapras, uh, you can actually print the whole thing without using any infill. So uh, I can safely turn this off and it would work just fine. Uh, it doesn't change the print speed or anything like that, but it does make the outside texture a little bit nicer in most cases. For printing material, I found 205 works pretty well. I have had to reduce it on some of the other quality settings, but for 205, for the, the couple different PLAs that I've tried, a couple different brands, it has worked pretty well. Especially if you have some cooling fans near your printer, so something kind of helping the, the PLA cool down faster, uh, then you might be able to increase this a little bit more. And, and if you don't, if your room is you know particularly warm, you might want to decrease this a little bit. But 205 I found has been a good starting block, and if you need to, you can always drop it down 5 degrees or something like that. Build plate 60 degrees C. Printer only supports 1.75 millimeter diameter PLA, so it's fine there. Flow is always 100%, enable retraction. All these settings I've kind of seen from other people and kind of added them all together to kind of make them my own. So uh, this is what I've found has worked for other people and it seemed to work really well for me. I don't really have any strings or anything like that coming out of my prints, so it works pretty well. Uh, four millimeters distance, 40 millimeters a second, and every time it goes at least half a millimeter. So everything fine there. Print speed. Uh, you don't want to go too fast with this printer. I mean, it's obviously it's a budget printer. 50 millimeters a second is kind of ideal for this particular printer. Um, the travel speed is 75 on the standard quality here. Um, the initial layer speed is 25 millimeters a second. You want to make sure that the outer speed is also pretty slow too at 25 millimeters a second. Since we are doing three layers, it does really help make the outer layer look uh, really nice if you go on a slower speed. So 25 millimeters a second here. Obviously enabling print cooling, five seconds here, and that's 
pretty much about it. In certain cases where you need the print to go a little faster, like if you are printing in a large object like this Lapras, which on standard quality does come out to be 498 layers. If we go ahead and change it to faster, which is another print setting that I have, it just kind of adjusts a few of the um, different parameters here to make it print it faster. Layer height is now 0.2625, uh, so bumping it up a, a little bit from the standard quality. The layer heights all stay the same here. Um, the wall thickness I went down to 0.8 because I only need two layers because it's not necessarily for beauty, it's for getting the print out faster. And the top and bottom thickness was adjusted a little bit here too. Again, it's a multiple of the layer heights here. Reduce the infill down to 15%. Temperature is all going to be the same. The print speed is going to be mostly the same but the outer wall speed is now at 40 millimeters a second and the initial layer is 50 millimeters a second and the travel speed is 150 millimeters a second. And as you can see, this does reduce the time here. So two hours and 42 minutes on faster and on standard, it's five hours and 35 minutes. So uh, roughly twice as fast. Obviously these times are not going to be exactly what you're gonna get out of the printer. Normally these are on the low side, so especially um, if you need to get the printout faster going to the faster settings can definitely increase the overall speed if you're okay with a reduction in resolution. So you can see here 333 lines so it took off um, about 150 lines off of the standard print. And in the times that you do want a higher quality print I've also kind of designed this fine detail. Um, the layer height is 0.0875. A lot of people are able to print at 0.04 something, but what I found is in Cura, at least this particular version of Cura, you can actually only resolve the decimal point to four digits. So if you do half the speed, it would end up being rounding up or rounding down. And so just for the sake of ensuring that we're using the best quality settings available, I went with 0.0875 wall thickness and top and bottom layers are the same as for standard and fills the same the temperature I did find that I had to reduce the temperatures down a little bit from 205 to 195 a lot of it is because it is printing a bit slower so the hot nozzle is actually going to be a lot closer to the, the printer or to the, the PLA for longer so I found reducing it a little bit did help with the overall quality and a little less of it melting down and then for the print speed, I went down to 40 millimeters a second, outer wall still at 25, and the layer is at 45, and the travel speed is still at uh, 45. So just a slight reduction overall. So the print time pretty much doubles, but what you do get out of it is double the resolution pretty much. So 499 lines on the standard quality, and this one has an even 1,000 lines of print. So kind of similar to how you would have vertical resolution for, like, for gaming, stuff like that, when they have a, a dynamic resolution that only scales on one axis. This one, the resolution of everything else in the print, so the horizontal XY resolution is actually the same between all the different prints, but you do have triple the, the resolution of the faster quality and double the resolution of the standard quality, but at the same time, you do pay for it with an extra 100% in print time. Now these settings aren't necessarily hard and fast rules, they're more like guidelines to kind of help you get to a, a point, or at least help you get to the point that I'm at uh, in getting print quality. But for the most part, you know, the standard quality is definitely enough for what you're gonna need in most cases. So standard, uh, it does definitely print um, pretty well. It resolves a, a fair amount of detail um, and, you know, it does have pretty good resolution and most people aren't really going to be upset with the the quality of prints coming out of it on standard and even for things like display pieces you know you should be able to get by with standard i mean there are cases where you are going to want to to step up the resolution and there are cases where you don't want to set up the infill like if you're doing a really strong piece you will need to have it um, actually be able to withstand some of the pressure there are going to be cases where you can use the faster quality to do prints that are going to be either support or for things that aren't necessarily going to be show pieces themselves. Um, like this case, I printed the stand at the faster quality setting um, just so it can hold the little Destiny Ghost. So, so for this, even though you can definitely see the layer lines, it doesn't actually look bad because it's, it's a stand. I mean, that's what it is. So for things like 
like that. Definitely using the faster speeds I found have worked just fine. And in really, unless you're doing very fine detail work, uh, you aren't going to notice much of a difference between between any of them. So like if you're, if you're doing a cube or something like that, you don't necessarily need to go on the, the 0 0.04, the 0 0.08 layer heights. And there are definitely cases where you are going to want to use the, the, the fine detail stuff, especially if you're doing models that are smaller than the original size. Um, say like this little guy, um, if I was printing this in faster, which I did, he, he loses a whole lot of detail because he's only like 60 lines of detail high. However, if I printed him on high, he would pretty much be an identical match for the same guy, but much bigger. But really everything's gonna be dependent on what materials you are using. Uh, the PLA temperatures do vary between brands, they vary between colors. So kind of use this as a starting point. Uh, the biggest thing though is for this particular printer, uh, you want to use specific layer heights as it does have a butter zone of what prints really well and what will kind of not work quite so well, what is the most accurate and what's not. Thanks for watching guys, this is LH Lowtech and this has been a quick overview of what I use to print on the Monoprice Select Mini V2. Subscribe.